Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Main event time, Bantamweight. This is a crazy, crazy matchup, right? Like, just in, insane. Like, Bantamweight is just crazy as a whole. But just this one is just, I love it. I love that it's five rounds. Marlon Vera versus Corey Sanhagen. Vera, 30 years old, five foot eight switch stance fighter, 22, seven and one, 14 and six in the UFC. Four straight wins against Dominic Cruz, Rob Font, Frankie Egger, and Davey Grant. 73% finishing rate, 8 KOs, 10 subs, 7 months between fights for him, and he is the betting underdog. On the flip side, you got Corey Sanhagen, 30 years old, 5'11", switch stance fighter, 15-4 and record, 8-3 and in the UFC. He has wins over Song Yadong, Frankie Egger, and John Lineker. 67% finishing rate, 70, 7 KOs, 3 subs, 6 months between fights for him. What an incredible matchup, Mike. Let's see man. your analysis. Man, I, you know, <clears throat> John and Jay Spec, I just, first of all, thank you for having me on this week. I appreciate it. You know, one thing that really sits with me is both of these guys have experienced the burn of a controversial loss. Uh, you look at Marlon Vera and his fight against Song Yadong, and there have been others that have really, um, he seems to have really it has lit a fire under him to not get burned by the judges and then you look at Corey Sanhagen and his fight against TJ Dillashaw that uh that was something that uh, a very tough pill for him to swallow this matchup is phenomenal props to Sean Shelby and the crew for booking this as the main event all hands on deck everyone's going to be excited for this bout the way I see this playing out is you have Corey Sanhagen, who is the he's the better round winner. He is uh, the more fleet of foot. He also is the more dynamic striker. Uh, you have Marlon Vera, who has a deceptively solid ground game. If the fight gets there, that is a real threat on the mat. You also have someone who is tough as nails and someone who I mentioned it in my earlier breakdown today that it takes him a while to get his engine revved up. But once he does, he's ready to go. But the problem is that usually happens around the midway through the second round where he figures things out. This is in the larger octagon. You have Corey Sanhagen, who I suspect is going to be landing the better shots at range. He's going to be going to the body. He's going to be landing kicks. I know Marlon Vera is going to be trying to chop Corey Sanhagen down. We saw the O'Malley fight and others, but you also go back to the O'Malley fight and you saw O'Malley was ha basically having his way early with, with uh, Vera there. The way I see this playing out is that Sanhagen is going to get up on the scorecards. He's going to be cerebral in his approach. And I know that he has his, just his deficiencies on the mat. And that could be a real problem here. If, if there is the threat of a submission for Vera, where that is, that is a possibility, but I'm going to be picking Corey Sanhagen to win. And I think that even though we're in Texas, that the, what we see when it goes to the judges, it's going to be crystal clear that Corey Sanhagen is ahead. And also it would not, it is not out of the realm of possibility for Corey Sandhagen to win this fight inside the distance. I have to put that out there as well. I, I have thought about this. I've broken down the tape. I've spent, honestly, probably about 10, 12 hours on this specific matchup, and I'm going to be picking Corey Sandhagen to win. But uh, the other side of the coin here, uh, Jay Speck and John, I have to mention, is that Marlon Vera is a fighter who will not go away. He's someone that if you do not finish him, he's going to come back. He's going to figure you out and he's going to make every punch and every kick count. And he's going to do whatever the hell he can to make the most of those opportunities. So it's not like I'm counting uh, Marlon Vera out. I would never do that. He's made me a lot of money in the past. Also, both of these fighters have, but I will say 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to be picking Corey Sanhagen. I think that he has more tools at his disposal and that he's uh, both of these fighters, the arrows pointed up. So it's a shame that somebody has to lose. I'm going to be picking Sanhagen. Jay Speck. All right. Let me read some comments from the fans. Spawn saying, I think Cheeto weathers an early storm from Corey San <laughs> Corey Sandbaggins and then totally beats the Hobbit out of him like he did Job Font. So many puns there. Um, Tay Baza, I got Sandman. It's scary Cheeto can get the the excuse me the, the the Joe Blow at any minute, but that doesn't warrant me to pick him. Overall, I think Corey is a better fighter, more volume, the way he mixes his shots nicely, amazing body shots, leg kicks, and I think he has the better wrestling. Last but not least, Brianna Frost coming in with hard one. I'm going with Sanhagen by decision. The fighter, uh, the fan poll comes in a little more margin than I thought. Marlon Vera getting the go-ahead by the fans. 61% of the fans signing up for Mr. Vera in this one. I kind of figured, just the way people have been talking, people love Cheeto Vera. I mean, they just love the dude. I don't think it's anything against Sanhagen. This is, I didn't really catch any Sanhagen hate when I was poking around. Just people love Cheeto, dude. And I'm kind of one of them. But when looking at it, there's a couple things I want to share. Uh, San, Sanhagen got some pretty sweet uh, training partners. He mentioned he's getting his grappling in with Ryan Hall. He's getting his striking in with Sergio Pettis. And then he's getting his wrestling in with Taiwan Claxton. All right. Those are all pretty good dudes in all of those departments. That's uh, and then of course, Vera's training with good guys, but I don't know any of their names. So I'm sharing what I got. Um, the other thing you might want to consider about Cheeto and his run right now is all of those great fights and stuff he's been having are all dudes 35 or older. All right. And we know what that means. All right. I'm not going to throw any shade about it, but that's something to consider. Now, lastly, I love Cheeto Vera, so please don't blow me up and say I'm hating on Cheeto. I love Cheeto, and that's probably the reason, because I want him to win, is the reason why I'm going to go the opposite direction and pick Sanhagen in this fight. I uh, I just think that Cheeto needs home runs to win. I don't think he's going to out-clever Sanhagen. I don't think he's going to pitter-patter him. We're going to use that. And, uh, th yeah, th that's where I'm going. I'm going Sanhagen on this one. All right. Make sure you guys watching, make sure you guys uh download the app. It's in the descriptions. Hit that subscribe, hit that like, and hit that share if you can. And uh yeah, go in and, and download the app and, and play against us, man. We're always making picks every week. The show is every week on Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern with a different analyst, and, and Mike is a, a reoccurring one. So join us. Yeah, there you go. Uh we got some comments here. Patrick Wilkins, Cheeto with highlight reel head kick. Tay Baza, Sandman, the goat emoji. Anthony W, yeah, bro, how can you bet this? Cheeto always losing till he wins. How am I supposed to predict that? That is a that is a good point you make. Um, let's see some other comments here. Uh, we got the man right here. Vera lost three years ago. WTF. Um, let's see if we got any other predictions here. Uh, he says, stop hating on Cheeto. <laughs> Already, let's go, All-Star Apps. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Now, let's get to my pick. Vera, man, he's he has turned into an incredible fighter. I think a lot of people at the start of his career didn't believe he would come this far, to be honest with you. But he's made the right adjustments. He's moved to the States. He's had, he's, he's even moved camps, right? He, he, I believe he was at Oyama with, with Alex Perez. And then he moved his camp over to Ruka with uh, Jason Perillo, right? I believe Jason Perillo is basically his head coach. And there's a lot of fighters right now over there that, that train with him or that is coached by him. You know, you got Mackenzie Dern, you've had Michael Bisping, you had BJ Penn, you know I mean? These are champions. They've become champions with Jason Perillo. And I'm very impressed by Vera and, and what he's done. And, and he's become a very likable guy as well, right? Throughout the years, you know, he's not a guy that just kind of like stays quiet. He has those one liners, right? He, you know, he makes headlines with, with his interviews. I like that. Sanhagen on the flip side, he's very opposite, right? He's just a very good fighter, right? He, he's not a, on the news. He's not doing all these interviews and, 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 
spouting out like in, insane opinions. He's not, he's just plain and he knows that, right? So you guys got to take all of that out of the, the equation. All of that stuff, take it out of the equation. Just look at them as fighters and how they've developed throughout the years. I feel like Vera has taken more damage throughout the years compared to Sanhagen, right? And I think Sanhagen is just a little bit more crisp on the feet and he's faster. I don't know if he necessarily has the power that Vera has because I think Vera can knock out Sanhagen with one shot if he can land it, but he has to set it up. Sanhagen is so smart, right, with his skills. And he he can grapple. That I think that's the X factor. Even Vera has a lot of submission wins, but I, I would give the edge, uh, the grappling edge to, to Sanhagen. Um, I think that these guys will cancel each other out, and this fight is going to play out on the feet. And I think Sanhagen, he needs to win. I think he's going to go out there and have a good game plan and, and dance around Vera and not be susceptible to the big shots. I see Sanhagen winning this fight via decision. It's going to be a long fight. I think it's going to it's going to be a fight where we're going to be on the edge of our seat every single round and, and be debating like who won the round. But I think Sanhagen is just going to be one step ahead of Vera in this fight. Um, but hey, I would not be surprised if Vera goes out there and shows us another level as well. You never know what's going to happen in this in this division, and whoever wins this fight puts them into a good position, right, in in the title picture as well. Especially with uh with uh what's his name, Marab saying that he won't fight Aljamain Sterling. That that only helps everybody else in the division, right? It's just like why, you know? What I mean, I understand why, but I'm saying like. Him not fighting the the next uh, champion after you know Suhudo and, and and Sterling fight, if if Sterling wins, it, it gives a, a a path for Vera or Sanhagen to fight for the title next, right, Mike? Don't you agree? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I hey, it's the best division in the sport for a reason. The most talent rich division in the entire sport. If you look at Bellator and others, one thirty five man. Solid, solid. So excited about it, excited about the future. And 